I think the problem is that what probably what the film distributors or you know the makers of the film would like is somebody to be you know furious and outraged. If you look at the poster, it's got um, quotes from well, various people saying you know well, it was so disgusting. I can't believe it wasn't censored. I think it was one of the things. Although they were all saying that's a, a good thing. And the the problem about it, with talking about it is that I don't want to say anything at all that makes it seem like it would be a fun thing, you know, to go and see, because you know something, oh, it's so shocking, it's so outrageous, it's so whatever it is, we must, we must go along. So firstly, I want to say that. Second thing is, I feel quite uncomfortable talking about it because I thought it was really horrible. I mean, not entertaining, but really genuinely horrible in a way that, um, you know, ages and ages ago, uh, Todd Haynes came on the Radio 5 show, I mean, way, way back, back in the 90s, and he was on talking about uh, the response that one critic had had to a film he'd made called Poison, which is a very interesting film. And he said that the critic said that they afterwards they wanted to go home and bath in Clorox. And I, you know, I'd raised that phrase before. Um, after Dirty Grandpa, I did feel genuinely unclean. I mean, genuinely like that thing about, you know, I want to go and have a shower because I've just because it's so revolting. So anyway, the story is uh, Robert De Niro. I have to say that again because I just can't really believe that it. it's Robert De Niro um, is this OAP who's just lost his wife and he's meant to be bereaved. Um, and he gets his grandson, played by Zac Efron, to take, take him. He says, you have to come to, 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 to Florida with me. And Zac Efron doesn't want to do this because he's about to get married. And it's apparent that actually what happens is that, that Robert De Niro's character just wants to go completely hog wild and have loads and loads of, you know, of sex. And, uh, and he's bringing Zach along for the ride because he thinks that, that, that Zach needs, needs loosening up. Um, I'll, well, I'll play you a clip anyway. So you're a lawyer at your dad's firm now? Is that right? That's right. And Meredith is too. You know, her dad's one of the managing partners there, so it's... Yeah, it's uh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. It could have worked out better. Because it's just that I remember when you were in high school, you told me how much you wanted to be a photographer, or travel the world, that sort of thing. And you remember when I got you that subscription to Time magazine? Yeah, I used to be into photography, but, um, I mean, with Dad being at the firm, it just made so much more sense to focus on a college curriculum that stressed the law school track. I mean, I love what I do, Grandpa. Being a corporate lawyer is awesome. I get to, I get to handle SEC compliance. You handle SEC compliance? Uh, LP agreements. Oh, uh, man, I didn't know that. LLC agreements. Being a corporate lawyer, you know, it's, it's got its upsides. I'm gonna hit the liquor store over there and get some more creature. You're paying the check, Alan Dushowitz. Now that clip was cut in order to cut out um, the thing that, that that Robert De Niro says in response to him, him saying I'm doing all this stuff as well. And he makes a joke about, you know what, I'd rather do than do any of that stuff. And then he makes a joke which we can't repeat on the air and I, we didn't really deserve to be repeated anywhere, which is just really the beginning of this just endless parade of um, really uh, crass vulgarity in which you sit there kind of slack-jawed that people that you've admired in the past have got anything to do with it. I mean, this is a film which, you know, it's not just the end, the endless, endless, endless crass sexual jokes. It's not the fact that it makes a joke at one point which is a gag about um, molestation it's not just a film in which they have, uh, you know, gone hell for leather to just kind of, you know, think of the most gross uh, humour possible and then put it into the mouths of people that you might otherwise have admired. It's that watching it, um, I, had the, I had that, that feeling, firstly, of thinking, I'm going to find it hard to watch a Robert De Niro film again because I, it's not that I feel that he should be the keeper of the flame of everything that he's done that was great in the past, but it reminded me of movie 43 and thinking, what are these people doing in this film? What has the director who incidentally, you know, is a long time collaborator with, uh, with Sasha Baron Cohen got on these people that they're doing this. And why is it that somebody, you know, I mean, Zac Efron, you can kind of say, okay, well, you know, uh, he you know he came to fame doing things like High School Musical, and maybe somewhere in some bonkers alternative universe, it makes sense for him to just take part in something that is really crass and vulgar and unpleasant in order to put clear blue water between him and his sort of squeaky. You know, it's like somebody being in a boy band and then, you know, making a, a heavy metal record or something. 
No, actually, it's nothing like that because heavy metal records can be great and wonderful. And this is just foul. I mean, really foul, really, really. I mean, like jokes, jokes that if somebody repeated them at a party, you'd throw them out. Um, there are there are things that I've seen in Bad Grandpa that I never I can never unsee. Robert De Niro doing things that I can't repeat on the air because of the time of day we're on that I can't ever unsee. And I unfortunately now if I watch Goodfellas or I watch King of Comedy, rather than seeing, you know, Rupert Pupkin being brilliant, I'm going to see Robert De Niro with with um Zach Efron walking in on him and finding him relaxing in a gentleman's way, as Viz Comics used to call it. And not just in a fleeting shot, but for a long time, and thinking, at what at oh, you know, I know he's got bills to pay and I know he's got projects that he wants to finance. And I'm sure that he that he feels that he's earned his he's earned his keep. And it's not like he hasn't let us down before, but this isn't like being let down. This is this is really like somebody putting their chin forward and challenging you to uh, to still have any re any vestigial respect for them at all. I thought it was really gross. I thought its sense of humor was so wildly misjudged. I know it's very smug and very smart and very middle class now to go, oh, well, you're shocked by those things. You know, oh, well, you know, we're comedians and we can push the boundaries of you know, of taste and that's what we're doing. We're and I can just imagine all the people making it sitting around in their smug dinner parties, smugly congratulating themselves on making something. Well, it's so shocking. It's so offensive. It's so shocking. And just thinking, I just don't want the film to exist. I wish I hadn't seen it. I wish I could unsee it, but I can't. But I don't want to talk about it anymore. Is it worse than Entourage? <sighs> I tell you what, somewhere in hell, there is a multiplex playing this on a double bill with Movie 43 and Entourage. 